morning. I'm uh, Paul Pate. I'm Iowa's Secretary of State and Commissioner of Elections. I want to thank you for coming over here to the Lucas Building. This is where our election staff uh, does all the great things that they do. And today we're going to share some uh, information with you, and I'm proud to announce that Iowans now have the ability to register to vote uh, electronically. And Iowa's been one of the best states in the nation for voter accessibility, and this is another avenue of making it easier for our citizens to participate in the process. We already have over 200 people who have accessed the site since it came up on the 1st. And through interagency cooperation between uh, my office and the Iowa Department of um, Transportation, we've developed an online voter registration portal that Iowans can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week, from any computer or mobile device with an internet connection. And as it said, it's launched January 1st. And uh, we, this was created uh, with no additional cost to Iowa taxpayers. We were able to build it on the back of the systems we already have. Uh, the system is housed in uh, the DOT's website, which is iowa.gov. And it's also accessible through the Secretary of State's website, sos.iowa.gov. The process is a very simple one. Anyone with a state-issued ID or a driver's license can now register to vote online. I'll underscore, anyone with a driver's license or a state ID can register to vote online. One unique aspect of this system is that it is, it, that it, try it again, new year, got to get this enunciation thing down. One unique aspect of this system is that it is a true electronic registration system. A lot of states now claim that they have online voter registration, but their process still requires the voter to fill out some type of paperwork that is mailed to them. And Iowa is one of the very few states where the entire process is online. As Iowa's commissioner's elections, I am proud to spearhead the effort, effort to bring electronic voter registration to Iowa. This is one of my top goals when I returned to Secretary of State last year was to help increase voter participation in Iowa and to make sure that everyone has an opportunity uh, who's eligible in Iowa to register to vote and to be able to participate in the process. The electronic voter registration is one more step in the process towards making voting more accessible to Iowans. And I'm proud to say that Iowa is one of the nation's leaders in voter access. We offer no excuse absentee voting. Iowa is one of only 11 states that allows voter registration on Election Day. Our 40-day early voting period is one of the longest in the nation, and New York is the only state with longer <laughs> Election Day voting hours than we are. We also point out we have legislation proposed this year will extend absentee voting for our military even further out uh, because of their uh, being stationed in isolated areas. So we're even going farther than we have to date. By instituting electronic voter registration, we now have six, and I say six, different ways that Iowans can register to vote. They can do it online, they can do it by mail, third is at driver's license stations, the fourth is at various other government agency offices, the fifth is they can take part in a voter registration drive, and sixth, they can register at the polls on elections day. And frankly, there is a seventh, and this is one that I'm very committed to, and that is our office We'll make ourselves accessible and available to help anyone who needs to be able to vote, register to vote, no matter what their hurdle might be, as long as they are eligible to vote in Iowa. And they can do so by reaching out to us at our toll number, toll free number, 888-SOS-VOTE. We will help anybody who needs that extra help. We will work to, with our local county auditors to do the same on the local level. I'm going to encourage every county auditor in this state, and I'm going to encourage the Republican and Democrat parties and anyone else who wants to help Iowans gain access to the polls to link to the DOT's voter registration portal on their own website. Another great aspect of the system is that we can increase voter participation without sacrificing integrity. For more on that, some of the technical aspects of the system, I'm pleased to turn the podium over to Mark Lau with the Iowa Department of Transportation. Mark has been our key partner in this process over the last year, and uh, he's going to fill you on some of the technical side. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And Mark Lowe, Director of the Motor Vehicle Division. I'll just, I'll just give some brief remarks, and then I know we have time for questions after the demonstration, so we can leave any technical questions if sure. that's okay. Uh, but one of the key roles that the Iowa DOT serves for the state is to verify identity. In the process of issuing driver's licenses and IDs, we personally verify the identity of the, identity of the vast majority of Iowans. 
Once we verify the individual's identity and issue a driver's license or ID, we create a shared bank of information between us and the individual that's a key to safe and secure electronic government services for Iowa citizens. We're pleased to partner with Secretary of State to offer voter registration as the first online service by another government agency that takes advantage of our online service portal and our existing identity verification process. Over a quarter million Iowans have used the Iowa DOT's online services portal for driver and vehicle services. And now any Iowa driver's license or ID holder, regardless of their, whether they drive or not, will have a convenient way to register to vote, update their address, or change their party affiliation any time of day or night, and from any location or device with internet access. This online system is another choice among the many voter registration options already available to Iowans. Iowa's online voter registration process represents an efficient use of state resources because it leverages existing processes already built into the Iowa DOT's online services portal and existing processes between the Iowa DOT and the Secretary of State. The portal offers an established and secure way to assure the person registering to vote is the person they claim to be and the connection to a driver's license or ID record allows the Secretary of State to associate an individual's digitized license or, excuse me, digitized license or ID signature with their voter registration application, which was an important deliverable to the Secretary of State to effectively implement a complete voter registration transaction online. Built entirely with in-house developers, the online services gives the vast majority of Iowans more convenience and better access to voter registration services without sacrificing security or integrity, all at no additional cost to taxpayers. We're very pleased to have had the opportunity to, excuse me, to contribute our time and resources to this project. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to do a brief demo, if we could, for you. Uh, and the deal's all set up here. This is going to be from the home page on the Secretary of State website. You can also uh, get it directly from the Iowa's DOT home page. If you click on the register to vote, where it says click the electronic voter registration box, it'll take you to the DOT's registration portal. All right. Now, the next step would be you'd log into the system using your personal identification info, which is on your driver's license. You know the things, right? Okay. And then we move on to providing the first five digits of the number at the bottom of your license or your ID. We'll confirm it and that you're eligible to vote in Iowa, which is the next click. And then there's an extra step to make sure we're providing accurate information. And then you're going to verify your address, your date of birth, and other pertinent information, and you'll click. Uh, you get done with that again, that you're providing the accurate information. On the next page, you're going to choose your party affiliation. To that click next and then you're going to confirm that you're providing truthful information and reconfirm that you are registered to vote in Iowa. It's that simple. What we've done is the same basic format as you would do if you were doing it on paper, it's just on the electronic format. Uh, I want to make sure I thank uh, the Outer Department of Transportation again for the, all the work that was put into this. Uh, Director Paul Trembino, uh, Melissa, Nicole, both right on the front line doing this. Uh, anytime we asked them, uh, can we get this? They kind of smiled at us and said, well, we'll try. And they, we got it. And uh, I appreciate that very much. A lot of work put into it, and I also appreciate my staff's work in making sure the pieces fit so that we all were on the same page uh, as to where we were going. Right. At this time, uh, I'd be happy to take questions if we could. Uh, questions you might have, comments? Secure thing. Was I listening correctly? Did you say that 200 people have already taken advantage of this since? 200 people have already visited the ac accessed the website. Uh, that doesn't always mean they're new registered voters. Some of them could be updating their addresses. Some of them could be just looking at it, for that matter. But right now, as off the article was written already. It's gotten some interest from the 1st of January. So we've seen 200 right now. Uh, this is going to be a great tool uh, to help in the voting process, too, in the elections process, because it'll give us more current and up-to-date records so we can reduce the lines on Election Day. You know, if you're going to change something, do it before you go in. Uh, it'll speed up dramatically. 
and it also I think is a, a great resource because it again it gives us the time to verify the integrity side that you are who you say you are and, and uh, we can assure people they're getting the kind of election they want. Do we have an update on how many people have actually registered since the online? No, I don't yet. Uh, with the process as it works, each day the information is, is uh, downloaded to us. We and then and it will actually it's directed to the counties and to us and it will be added to our master voter registration or I vote list on a daily basis. Uh, and it, the persons will get their notification. There's a distinct difference between how we do it in other states, as I mentioned earlier. Most of the other states mail them a piece of paper and say, sign this. And then when you show up for your first election, you have to stand in line like you're registering again. Uh, in this case, no, you're registered. You're set. Yes? Is there any uh, plan to make sure this information goes out to groups that have historically low voter turnout? Like I'm thinking perhaps the youth vote? We'd hope that everybody will see it. We're going to we're going to promote it aggressively. Uh, that's why I said earlier we're going to reach out to both the Democrat and Republican Party and to those groups who normally do voter registration drives because this is an excellent way to do it because it takes some of the question mark out. I don't know if any of you uh, looked at your own handwriting for an example. It gets extremely challenging sometimes to read the forms when they're filled out, but by going online and tying into what the DOT already has on file we get better quality. We're, we're going to know you're getting the right addresses and the, and the names and spellings and everything is much more accurate. Yeah, uh, you, <laughs> this process has been criticized by some who are who are concerned about the 145,000 that don't have a driver's license and ID. How do you address those folks? Well, I think uh, first they need to take a look at what we're proposing here, what we're offering. This is a great resource. We're stepping up to uh, well over 93% of the eligible voters in Iowa having direct access to online voter registration and updating. So it's going to be a great tool. Is it the final tool? No. Uh, as technology advances, as we can implement that technology and assure the integrity side of it, we certainly will entertain that and look at it. As I mentioned earlier, we have six, seven if you count our personal commitment, ways to register to vote. So there's no one who's left behind. There will be no one who will be left behind. We are very aggressive on voter registration in this office, and we've been a very good state on being aggressive for voter registration. Both political parties have demonstrated that in recent days. If you've noticed how the voter registration numbers are climbing, it, you attribute that to what they're doing. They're inspiring people to want to register. We're just trying to give them one more tool. Uh, the Motor Voter Act, as it was passed originally, was challenging us to offer multiple opportunities for people to register to vote. There is no one approach. It's multiple. So we'll, I think we're doing the right thing there. We'll continue to reach out and try to come up with more ideas and more ways to advance the process. Is there any concrete... What, I'm sorry. No, I, 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 yes. yeah, no uh, my, my question was relatively similar. Okay. Um, I do realize that uh, this process as well as the one that was former covered about 93% mm -hmm. um, of voters in Iowa. I guess I'm wondering for uh, those groups that did come out a couple weeks ago and speak to you guys like the ACLU, um, how are you guys uh, hoping maybe in the future to address some of those people who may be disabled who may not have that access to come and get an ID so they can vote? Well, again, if you look at the six options we already offer, I don't think any of them fall. They can use one of them. I can't think of a single incident where there's not one of those, those options. Are, would, would, one of them will work. One of them will work. Uh, but we're trying to make it more convenient. That's what we're really talking about here is convenience, not accessibility. There is access. Now we're just talking about how convenient can I make it for a group or a person. And we're going to continue to work to try to improve on that, in that area. Uh, but we're not going to exclude anybody. I serve on the National Secretary of State's Elections Committee. And we constantly look at this issue. Uh, we look at how we can deal with it. I was just at a recent meeting where we were, were addressing that. But I went, let me throw something out. And I, I don't want to sidetrack from our press conference here today. But we have a bigger issue at hand, too, ladies and gentlemen. And that's participation. Registration isn't the challenge of the hour. It's important because you have that starts the process. But when you want to talk about voter turnout and people going to vote, that's a bigger challenge that we all know we have to work harder at. And uh, so that's that's really what we, we need to keep our eye on as well. So yeah. kind of follow up on that question. Um, are there concrete plans to kind of close the gap with the seven percent that remain? And if so, are there any 
kind of a timeline out there in terms of we're really hoping by 2018 that this will be fixed? Or well, I don't have a firm timeline because we're some of it is we're waiting on the technology that we can feel comfortable with. We also are appealing to the legislature for technology funding. Uh, our system here is extremely old that this office has, and we are put together a pretty aggressive technology request to upgrade it uh, because we don't have the system. We were very fortunate in this case, the DOT had the backbone. They, have, they had a lot of this because of the motor voter process. If we had to build that from scratch, we, it would, we wouldn't be here talking about it today. This would have been going for years and years to build something that, that big. So the answer is yes, we're working on it, and yes, we're looking at options. But <coughs> until we can put the funding behind it and find the technology that we're comfortable with, now there are a couple states exploring it right now. We're watching them closely, and it, and they're basically pioneering it. And if, if we see how that has been successful, we'll certainly entertain it and look at it too. So cost is a is part of that. Well, cost equation. is always a part of it when you're in government because you have a budget, you have to work with them. But it's really more about the technology. I mean, we, it's, we haven't, it hasn't been shown to us that it's there yet. Uh, there are pieces of it, but not the full package. So we're going to look at that real closely. But that doesn't mean we're stopping, because we work very aggressively on programs and on outreach to all those groups who have various disabilities or have access issues. Uh, we have programs in place right now where we work with the agency of state government. We're working with nonprofits. We work with the uh, political parties, uh, what we should be doing to reach them in a, in a more convenient manner as well. That's why I said I don't believe we really have a, a, a situation where you can't register to vote. It's about the convenience of it. And we're, we're still working to improve on that. We'll still continue to work on that. But I, I hope I can have a better timeline once we've seen how the other states are doing. We have two states are exp said we're experimenting with it. And uh, we have to see how it's going to fall into place. And then we'll know more. Apologize if I miss it. What will confirmation look like for voters once they've completed this process? They'll get an e they'll get the email confirmation, and uh, they'll should get an, a registration card from their county auditor. Okay. And will that uh, like shortly after, or uh, shortly. I know they they come out on a regular schedule? I've, I've done. I did it January first. That was number ten. So when you get to this last page, you've got a confirmation page. You can just print for your own records, or you can enter your email and hit send, and it's within a matter of seconds. It pops up. The county auditors are pretty pretty quick about getting those out. Uh, and they'll get a voter registration card within seven working days. Um, is there any group that's still limited to doing it online? Is there any you know, specific disability or the will that cannot do it online? I, again, I, I don't think there should be. I mean, again, everybody has a unique circumstance. Uh, but I don't think it's any different than other things they experience in their day-to-day -day lives. We all work harder. Uh, both at a personal level and as a government to try and take the barriers down to try and make it more accessible to them and uh, we work closely uh, with the Department of the Blind we work really closely with uh, yeah we, we yeah. Work, we're trying to where there's technology we're trying to bring it in and we're not constantly reviewing all of our processes and so does other state government entities uh, because we're all interacting with, with people uh, who have different needs and are different levels of ability uh, and again, sometimes people want a mistake when we say the DOT because you're all assuming everybody's driving. Right. No, th 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 there's it's a state ID system here too. And there are a lot of people who use it for that purpose. And sometimes as we age out of our driving years, they'll just shift over to an ID card rather than you know, have their driver's license. So that helps for the seniors as well. But again, it's a, it's a great ID card as well. We make that available, to, and it works out to about what a dollar a year. I think it's eight dollars. Yeah, year. yeah. If I can speak to that for just one, from the from the step up the mic. Yeah. Yes, from from the from the perspective of whether or not you're a driver's license or ID holder, there's absolutely no disability related reason that you couldn't have one or the other. There are there are there are many very many people who have a disability of some kind that are still eligible to drive either with or without certain kinds of restrictions or accommodations. But for anybody that still needs an identification document, there's absolutely disability reason uh, that they would be excluded from that. We do have folks that have difficulty reaching our offices and much like the Secretary of State talks about with vehicle registration, we will go out to those folks uh, and personally personally appear and help them with those transactions. Um, and in fact, we added a vehicle we call DOT to go that's an RV that, that is a traveling uh, location. So that's giving us another way to create outreach opportunities. And part of the, one of the things we've talked about doing with that this year is going to nursing homes, care facilities, 
elderly assistance uh, locations, those kinds of things, to be able to provide uh, provide services much more directly than coming to our office. So, uh, so very much from from that perspective, uh, the concept of basing this off a driver's license or identification card does not exclude uh, any disability related. Group. And, and, and I'm going to plug into the kiosks that are out there right now too. Yes. I have a question for uh, for Mark. Usually when we reference that no taxpayer dollars are used, it's mostly referencing maybe the sort of the general fund. And I know that a lot of DOT expenses are uh, paid through with sort of fees through, you know, different services. And so I'm curious if there was remotely any increase in any type of fees to help offset this because it's not technically taxpayer dollars. Right. No, when we say that, what we're saying is, uh, you know, the DOT is funded with road use tax fund dollars as well as the motor fuel provision and driver services specifically. Uh, and the IT resources of use for that. But uh, we had a budgetary allocation that was flat from previous years, and everything that we did was within in-house development within that operating budget uh, without increasing the fees, without collecting the additional monies, so without any additional appropriations, if that makes sense. So no extra taxpayer money was spent? Right. Just, our, just our usual budget for the, for the fiscal year, correct. Do you expect the uh, technology savvy younger folks to start using this option that perhaps, you know, taking a trip down to the 76 office, uh, can you post it? Yeah, to no, I course. think it's already happened. Mark, you see yeah. what you've done for I was going to say, from our, from our experience, uh, we, we definitely see um, we, we definitely see younger people that are very oriented to using those devices, and that's the way that they're looking for services. I do think the interesting thing is we've, we've had a couple years under our belt with online <coughs> driver's license renewal, and we're seeing very healthy adoption across all segments uh, of the population, and I think that just pushes to the adoption rate of mobile devices. I think I read... I just gave a presentation a couple months ago that said more than more than two thirds of the populace has a mobile device now, and I think that's up to seventy five percent now. And the trajectory is only going to go higher, uh, as well as your digital transmission rates and all the things that make that possible. So, um, so in answer to your question, I think yes, the younger group is is, is definitely going to latch onto that. But I think that we're going to see it across really uh, all segments of our population. And one of the things I, I think you'll find it's going to really assist the folks who do voter registration drives, whether they be the League Women Voters or they be the uh, uh, political parties or the campaign, because now they can literally do it on their telephone for these people. Uh, and they're not, again, trying to read handwriting. We're not worried about a card being turned in. You know, uh, it's, it's, I think, a, a much smoother and cleaner transaction for them in the end as they go forward on it. How close are you to uh, online voting? That's a big jump for us. Uh, they're very candid. Uh, the, um, the state's looking at it. We're, we're still looking at all those the options that we're using in other states. The the, the biggest growth area right now has got to be uh, the absentee ballot process. You know, we are over 40 percent statewide right now, and and clearly it'll probably rise this year with the presidential year. And as that goes up, it's going to require us to take a hard look at how we do our elections. We are looking at some things in that arena of how to make it more user friendly. Uh, several states have done things like uh, voting centers, so that you know you don't have to worry about going to one precinct to, to do your voting. Uh, if you can go to a just a general site, that might be an option. So we're we're constantly looking at ways to to improve on that as well. Uh, the the key thing is uh, making sure people understand how important voting is. I can't, I can't underscore that enough. I mentioned to you that earlier. You know, we're talking today about making sure they have access. Uh, it's so important they understand the importance of, of their vote and why their vote is important, whether it be for school board, city elections, or the national and state elections. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. It's very disappointing when I see the dismal turnouts for school board election. One of the things we and I will brag so much about, you know, that we are an education state, that we believe in our young people's futures, and, and then when we see 3% voter turnout for the school board, uh, it's, it's something that we all know we've got to work harder at. And I say we, it's, it is a, a team effort. The candidates, the parties, the institutions, and uh, the media, and everybody else we can, can uh, recruit. Any last questions? I don't want to keep here. Yeah. Do you anticipate this will have any impact on turnout for caucus night? I know it's right around the corner, but if someone who's an independent can easily switch to Democrat or Republican in order to attend their caucus? That's a good question. We're not sure, but I can tell you it certainly makes it much easier uh, yeah. for those folks. And it will streamline the process of uh, caucus night so you're not going you know, to deal with it 
that one more thing to add to it. Uh, so those people who are thinking about that, here's the avenue. Uh, they can certainly entertain that and, and go that, that route. The, uh, the other key thing is here, we move a lot. We're still a mobile society, especially the younger we are, the more we move. And uh, uh, sometimes we don't get over to renewing our voter registration or our driver's license as much as we want them to, even though they're supposed to. Uh, so we have now made it easier for them to do both. That's what's so nice about this partnership. This is a partnership. The, the DOT gets more current information for what they need to, to administer our driving programs, and we're getting better lists for elections processes. And to me, this is the beginning of the elections process. By registering to vote, it's demonstrating a commitment or an interest in your government. You're signing on. You're saying, I want to be involved. And that tells the others, the candidates, the political parties, that Paul Pate or whoever uh, has an interest and in, they want to know more about the process. So we're going to reach out to them and give them information and hopefully get them to the voting place. But it's the beginning. It's the starting point. And this is a great tool to start it out with, I think. It adds to the other uh, items I've mentioned. We have, again, I want to underscore, we have six solid opportunities for how you can register to vote. And the seventh one is, is our stepping in and, and uh, <coughs> offering you that extra help. Uh, as Mark has mentioned, the DOT is prepared to come right to your home. I, I think that's about, that's curbside. Uh, we're, we're, we're there. So I, I think we're off to a good start. Thank you for coming today. If you have some more questions, please don't hesitate to follow up with Kevin over here or any of us. We will keep you posted as we see how it's working. Uh, I'm sure there'll be an interest in knowing, you know, uh, you know do we have 100, 200, 1,000? How many will we see coming into the system? And we made some good points as the caucuses come up. We'll watch to see what the trends are on that and try to share that with you. And please uh, check it out yourself. If you haven't updated your own voter registration or your driver's license, <laughs> you can go online and get that done. Thank you for coming.